Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to this special edition of the show titled Chiropractic Spotlights, Meet America's Leading Chiropractors. I'm Mark Imperial. My next guest is Dr. David Zamikoff from the Natural Healing Arts Medical Center in Bradenton, Florida. Dr. Zamikoff, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mark. Glad to help out. Super. So tell us a little bit about your practice and the type of clients that you serve. Well, I've got a multidisciplinary practice, so we see uh, quite a wide variety. Now, in Bradenton, we're primarily a, a retirement number one retirement place, I believe, in the United States, if that's still correct, uh, community. So a um, good portion are the, the elderly and the issues that they have. But I've got several different providers, and um, we can pretty much tackle just about anything. So from the most common aches and pains and ailments uh, up to some of the more serious and difficult stuff uh, to the point of where we have to then refer it out. Right on. Yeah, what, what are some of the most common conditions or ailments that you find your patients face when they come to see you? Um, with the, the elderly patients, it's a lot of the, the neck, mid-back, and low-back pain. Um, sometimes it goes a little further where it has some nerve implications, and we have to dig a little deeper to see what's going on. Um, we also have a, one of the larger sports complexes uh, in this town, so we have a lot of youth athletes um, all the way up to professional athletes that come down and do uh, some of their training down here as well. So, um, again, a, a wide variety of, of just different parts of the body that are injured from muscle spasms to um, having things out of place that need to be put back in. So there's still a lot of education that needs to be given to the public around, uh, around chiropractic, and that's kind of one of the purposes of the program today. What's What are some of the biggest myths or misconceptions people might have about chiropractic? Well, chiropractic... Um, as far as what we do, hasn't evolved a whole lot as far as uh, you know, the getting to the root cause of what the problem is and removing inter any interference there. But as technology has changed, we have more um, available to us for diagnosis as well as treatment. Chiropractic in general looks at trying to find, again, what the root cause of the problem is, not just covering up a symptom, utilizing uh, a medicine or a drug. So if you can get down to what is actually causing the problem and remove it, you don't have to have the adverse reactions and side effects of some of the drugs that are commonly used when you um, go that route. So, Dr. Zamikoff, what inspired you to become a, a doctor of chiropractic? Well, actually, I had, um, when I was a child, had uh, asthma, and it would go through bouts of where it was more severe than others. And um, my parents had taken me to a chiropractor, actually here in the same town. So, uh, I believe the, the gentleman is, is still retiring that I saw when I was a kid. So um, I got pretty much 100% relief uh, from going to a chiropractor from the asthma and, and breathing conditions that I had. As I went through school, I wasn't sure what I wanted to be. And my father was a, a dentist. Uh, I knew I didn't want to do that. I didn't have that much interest there. And so I checked into chiropractic and interviewed a bunch of different specialties when I was in college and uh, decided to go uh, with the the natural route and chose chiropractic. That's fascinating because I wouldn't have even thought that that chiropractic would be related to asthma. Could you kind of tell us a little bit about that and that discovery? Well, sure. Um, anything that you look at disease process in a body, you know, correlates or corresponds with how the nervous system is functioning. And with chiropractic, if you can, again, get down to that root cause and remove any interference, meaning the communication from the brain and the body, you can remove that interference, the body will function properly. So when there's, you know, be it a bone out of place, pressure on a nerve or an abnormally acting nervous system, if you can remove that interference, then the body will start to function normally. So, um, you know, many disease processes can be linked back to the spine itself or an abnormality in the spine. And if that can be corrected, uh, you free up the body's ability to function the way it was intended. And the subsequent illness will resolve. Now, we hear a lot that this is, uh, is dr drug-free type treatment. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's like, like what the, uh, the treatment is for, um, you know, removing interference in parts of the body? Well, sure. Um, so the chiropractic adjustment itself is the movement of a bone. So similar to like if you pop your knuckles or when you get up sometimes from the couch, you'll hear your knee or your ankle make that little crunchy sound. 
that's actually gas within the joint that's getting displaced or moving from one side to the other. Kind of like if you had a water balloon with a little bit of air in it, and you squeeze it back and forth. So same thing with, with what we do in the office. So we don't use pharmaceuticals to correct what's going on. We correct the alignment of the spine. So with checking out uh, or analyzing the person, um, we find the areas where there is a problem and remove that interference by adjusting that bone back into place. It's the technical term is called a subluxation, which means that the bone is out of place versus a dislocation where it's actually completely out of joint. So it's less than a dislocation, but uh, the term is called subluxation. And we correct those subluxations, uh, removing that interference and allowing the body to function. Is there anything else that's important that you'd want to share with our listeners that I didn't think to ask regarding chiropractic? Well, it's uh, the best thing I can say is anytime you're going to treat anything that's wrong with the body, you want to take a least invasive approach, working your way towards a more invasive approach. You know, many times in my office, I see people who've had surgery that has you know, subsequently failed or has not resolved their issue, and they then come to us as a last you know, last grasp at something that will work when we should have been the first to stop. So, you know, as you start with trying to get things back in order prior to then going to medication, then going to something a little more invasive, be it an injection or then ultimately a surgery. And once you do a surgery, you can't undo it. So, you know, that should be your, your last line of, of defense as opposed to the first. It's kind of, you know, where you get your information and who you ask. So it's, you want to start with least invasive and work your way the other way, not in the reverse order. That's sage advice. Dr. Zamikoff, uh, uh, this has been terrific information. How can our listeners, if they're near your area and could use your help, how could they find you and how do they reach you? Well, sure. I, again, am uh, Dr. Zamikoff in Bradenton, Florida. Um, I'm on the internet and pretty easy to be found. We do have people who come from all over the world. My current furthest patient actually comes from Thailand. He comes twice a year. He is CEO of a very large company and comes into town for a week or two. And we treat everything we can in that amount of time and he flies home. So um, Natural Healing Arts is the name of our practice. Uh, We're on the west coast of Florida, about 40 minutes south of Tampa. This has been terrific. I really appreciate your time sharing with our listeners today. And I wish you continued success for you and for all of your patients. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'm Mark Imperial, and this is the program spotlighting noteworthy professionals, experts, and business owners from around the world and in your town. If you know a great business or professional that we should feature on the program, I'd like to hear from you. You could nominate them by emailing me at radio at markimperial.com. Once again, that's radio at markimperial.com. In this next segment, our home stretch, I've got a special treat for you. If you're a business owner or professional, or if you aspire to be one, for over seven years, I've been interviewing leading experts and business celebrities and sharing their secrets to success with you. From my first show, Entrepreneur's Edge, to Game Changers Radio, to Mad Rocket Business, all the way to Remarkable Radio and this program today, in this home stretch, I'm bringing you a flashback to one of my most popular episodes, covering how to attract clients magnetically using only the power of words and without costly branding. So enjoy this very special edition home stretch, and here we go. Now, get the edge. Here are Mark and Tom. Hey, welcome to the show. It's Mark Imperial, another power thinking hour here at Entrepreneur's Edge. Mark, this is Tom Rebar, and uh, it is time for all the capitalists and all of the entrepreneurs and the self-employed people and the professionals in private practice and all the sales and marketing pros to come out of the woodwork and put their feet up and uh, join together right. and uh, learn for an hour. That's right. So welcome back, everybody. And we've got a terrific show. We're recapping a fantastic week that we had here at Entrepreneur's Edge. We just had our Entrepreneur's Edge live event last Wednesday. And boy, it was a hoot. The party was jumping. I'm telling you, they almost had to kick us out of that hotel. They did, and uh, there's nothing like talking about advertising and copywriting that gets people out of their chairs, because once you start talking about that, people realize that even if you thought you knew everything there was to know about it, you realize there's more to learn and 
more to still learn. Yeah, the place was absolutely on fire. We had Conrad Hall and Ken Schreiber join us in speaking on copywriting and writing the words that sell your business. What better way to get to the bullet points of that than to recap what we talked about at Wednesday's event? Go for and, it. And you know what? In, in fact, if some if you if you missed it, you really missed a, a hugely valuable opportunity to boost your response. Because I'm talking about, you know, we talked about headlines and and postcard and copy that got four to five times the response of, a, of another of another control. So that's a 400 to 500 percent increase by just changing the words on the paper. How many folks don't think about that? A whole bunch. So we started out, you know, one of our guest speakers, Ken Schreiber, he was talking about lead generation and the minute differences about generating leads with your copy as opposed to like using sales conversion. Now, uh, one of the key points and takeaways he talked about, he started out, check this out. He started, the first thing he said when he got up on the stage is he said, who here wants a surefire way to get new customers or prospects without any marketing cost? And all the hands went up, right? Mine went up. Yeah. Now, I was the first one. Now, guess what? He says that was the first lesson in lead generation. You are trying to identify exactly with the person what is it that they want. So if you have the right market, the right list, and then you give them that question, who wants this solution, and you're talking directly at a person, and they, they raise their hand and identify. That is it. That's as simple as that. And then you make them an offer that they just can't refuse. Because all you want is to find out who those people are who are willing to raise their hand. Yeah. And you could adapt that into any business type that you can. You know, now look at this. He all, you know, another key is speaking directly at that, uh, that target person. If you, if you get a list, if you're doing a mailing, a postcard mailing, and you know who that customer is you're looking for, you identify it, and you speak directly at their problems. You have to identify, and we talked about this, I call it the hidden benefit. Because you have to you think about your customer and think of all the problems that they have in their lives, because what you are is you're a problem solver. That brings up another point. A lot of business owners, a lot of businesses out there, they make the mistake. And we had some folks talk about this in the room as well. They, you know, I say, what is your ad about? What, what was the message you put in your marketing? And they said, well, a discount, you know, a discount or percentage off. And the reality is, uh, is that you, they're, they're trying to sell their product directly. And we say that that kind of hurts your response because when you try to sell your product directly, the only people that are responding are those that are ready to buy like your widget or your thing right now. At that immediate point in time. So it's about transcending timing. So we're going to be back after this break and continue because we've got a lot of nuggets that came out of that event on writing words that sell. BusinessEdgeRadio.com. Go to the website, get our free gift, and we'll be right back after this. Stay with us. Business owners and entrepreneurs. Once again, here's Mark and Tom. Hey, welcome back to your Power Thinking Hour for entrepreneurs and business owners. It's Mark Imperial. This is Tom Rebar. Hey, Mark, let's go back to that uh, uh, the story you were telling right before the break about the person who was going for the jugular and trying to make the big sale right out of the gate. Um, let's try to make sure we bring the loop fully closed there. What do you do to get around that? Well, let's see. Let, you know, as I mentioned, a lot of business owners, you know, they think, you know, they're not, you know, they're in the mindset of I got to sell my thing. So they're focused on how can I sell my thing? Let me present my product or my service and let me uh, give a discount or a coupon. That's like the knee jerk reaction to what you, what, you know, what they're offering. And then and, when people don't buy, they right away, they think, my price is still too high, so they get into this headset of, now I got a further discount. Yeah, they're focusing on the wrong thing, and it's because they get a low response rate. But our answer to that, what we know from testing, is that the low response rate is because you're not transcending timing. You're making an offer for people that are ready to buy right that minute. But then when somebody is in the buying cycle, but they're not just quite ready to buy yet, and you know maybe a month down the road, they forgot all about you. You're only picking up the immediate buyers. You have to find a way to transcend the timing, and we do that with lead generation. And it has nothing to do with price. So That's right. get price out of your head that it's not that your price is too high. That's often the last thing to even consider is the price. I mean, the example that I'm going to give you and for the listeners is uh, we had a terrific home remodeling company in the audience and uh, asked us how do we directly link what we're talking about here 
at the event to his type of business. I said, is there a business that feels like they don't know how to link this lead generation strategy to theirs? And then he raised his hand and he said, you know, home remodeling. What, what do I do? And I said, what are you doing currently to get your business? He said, I did a mailing. Um, what was the offer on the mailing? It was a, a discount of some sort. And we told them the same thing. You're, you're selling a discount. You're only going to pick up the buyers ready to buy now. And then he said, well, what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is you want to find people that may not just be thinking about buying right now, but maybe they are already in their head. You know what? Six months from now, a year from now, I know I'm going to have a move. How are you going to get those people to, to identify themselves so you can continue to stay in front of them? Well, we said, why don't you offer a, a report? A report called, you know, the seven deadly traps and how to avoid them, how to save blah, blah, blah on your uh, remodeling costs, how to get, a, you know, uh, uh, how to remodel your kitchen, your, your home or whatever, and save the maximum seven deadly traps, a report that is going to be useful to that prospect. That way, even if it's six months or a year from now that they're thinking about the move, they still want that free report that that little trick alone increases the response to four or five times. Easily, easily. And um, and you could tell that this fella, because I was I was sitting across the room from him, he, he had a big smile on his face as soon as you started to unveil that story, because you could tell right away he got it mm-hmm. and had kind of went back into a, oh, that makes sense right away to him. So That's right. He was a very smart person. Yeah. So, you know, back to the list of uh, what Ken Shriver was speaking about, he's, you know, another nugget was speak directly at him. Who is it that you're mailing to and what is their direct problem? The next point is the, the you know, everyone's favorite radio station besides WIND is WIIFM. What's in it for me? Exactly. So that, you know, literally the headline or the message that you put on your, your mailing pieces has to address directly at them because it has to pass that test. You know, Conrad Hall mentioned this, the so what test. You read your headline, whatever you consider your headline, and run it through your own head and say, okay, I read something and so what? You know, is it going to make you say so what or is it going to intrigue you to read further? Well, in fact, he even suggests to do that for every one of your bullets. When you put the bullet there, just read it out loud and say, now, so what? What is that person going to answer if they read it? And you say, so what, to give you, give yourself a chance to substantiate that bullet in your head. Yes, that's right. Is it a worthy bullet? Yep. And you know, I have a litmus test actually for you. Let's, you know, let's, first of all, let's wrap up with what Conrad was talking about before you even go into the litmus test on headlines. But, you know, Conrad has a great description for copywriting. He said, it's the art of using words to create action. Now think about that. The art of using words to create action. How many folks really think of their advertising in that way? The most of the time I see people uh, put, uh, doing an advertisement, it's like the name of their company or their logo. How does that create any action? One of the, um, one of the best testimonials for last night was I brought my assistant along to your summit. He is just beginning to think about the art of copywriting. And when we left, he said that was one of the best meetings he's ever been to. And he got more notes in a short period of time about how to write copy than he ever thought he would by coming along last night. It's incredible. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that, you know, many of our pros in Mastermind, for example, they we take it for granted because we, we've been so uh, immersed in this kind of marketing, but it's eye opening for many. Um, you know, for example, one of the keys, the big keys that was huge for everyone in the room was when Ken Schreiber discovered, described. And remember the headline, who else here wants to know how to acquire new customers uh, and, and, and prospects without any acquisition cost? Right, right. right. Now, how do you do it without acquisition cost? Well, if you were at the summit, I don't have enough time in the next four minutes to tell you, but you can do, you know, he, it was a brilliant strategy he had about uh, liquidating your your marketing costs. Mm-hmm. And so you have to be at Entrepreneur's Edge live events. And these are the kind of things that we talk about. So, uh, you know, this is probably the best time ever to give a plug for the next live event. Make sure you go to Business Edge Live or BusinessEdgeRadio.com. Click on the Live Events tab, and you're going to find the next meeting in Madison, the next meeting in Green Bay, and the next meeting in Oak Brook. 
hey, we've only got about a minute here, and I want to talk about one bullet. I have about 12 here. Go ahead. But let's talk about the headline, because that is, what is the headline? The headline of your ad is the ad for your ad. Does that make sense? It, the, and what is the only job of the headline? The only job of the headline is to shout out and get somebody to be interested in taking the next step, which is to read what else is there. Read the next line. Absolutely. And it's the most valuable real estate on your ad or your postcard or your mailing. And what do most companies inadvertently waste in that space? What do they do in that space instead? How many people put the name of their company or their logo up at the top of the ad or the top of their website, and then they wonder why nobody's reading it? It's because they never had a headline there. Hey, in the wrap-up, I'm going to give my litmus test for great headlines for, for all the listeners. After the break, Tom Apicella from Think Spaces in Naperville, Illinois, will be joining us to give us his tips, tricks, and secrets for furnishing your office. We'll be right back, businessedgeradio.com. We'll be here. Stay with us, businessedgeradio.com, for all the events. Hey, we're back. It's Mark Imperial. And this is Tom Rebar. We are in the home stretch again, Mark. I can't believe another week has gone by so fast. <laughs> That's right. Hey, we're back here with Tom Apicella from Think Spaces in, in Naperville, Illinois. Hey, Tom, I wanted to ask you, you just recently joined our mastermind group here at Entrepreneur's Edge. Can you tell me what drew you to the group and what you're getting out of it so far? Well, um, what, what grew, drew me to the mastermind group is, you know, I, I want to have a uh, other like mind entrepreneurs and um, people that I can I can basically bounce ideas off of, talk about my business to help expand it. Um, you know, because as a lot of people know, there's a lot of businesses in one business that you can extrapolate from. Um, so, you know, just having that and then it's also, you know, for accountability when you come up with new strategies and ideas, uh, you, you know, there's some accountability because they're going to ask you, you know, well, what did you do with what you said you were going to do with last month? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, action is the way to make things happen in business. Now, that's terrific. And now for the folks listening, whether they're a property manager or a business owner looking to move or improve their spaces, how can they get a hold of you for your information? You can go to thinkspaces.net and uh, you can fill out one of our interior design contact forms or uh, there's a phone number on there that you can call, uh, 630-324-324. Four five nine eight. Tom, it was terrific having you on the show. Thank you for coming out today. Thanks for having me, guys. Enjoy the show. Terrific. Thank you. Tom, we're on the home stretch now. We are. I can't believe it. Now, I promised a litmus test for people to test whether their headlines are any good. So, give them. All right, here it is. Now, this is sort of like the classified test, if you think of like a classified ad. And what are the classified ads all about? It's, it's usually a small, tiny little ad, right? Very small. With, with just, you don't have enough room to put anything but a blurb and a call to action, a CTA, like a phone number. Right? That's exactly right. So what you do is you take whatever you think is your headline, and then you neuter out everything else and just put your, your uh, phone number or whatever your response mechanism is under it. And if the two make sense and entice you to move forward, like let me give you an example. What do most people use as their headline that's wrong? And we tell you, but we talk about this a lot. The company, company name, Company right? name and maybe a logo. So let's look at the litmus test. A to Z painting, phone number. Now, is that entice you to take any action? So who'd call with A to Z painting and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? That's right. Isn't, there's no words that cause action. Now, what if the headline, let me, you know, let me think just off of the top of my head here. Let's use a, a, an example for a, a bowling alley, okay? <laughs> Something weird. Now, what if the headline said how to bowl a 300 every time uh, and then a phone number? Now, th- that causes you a little bit more enticement to call that number. Sure would. So there's a difference between the, you know, that's the litmus test. Take your headline and put just the headline and the phone number or response mechanism and is that enough to make somebody take some action? That's the litmus test. test. Great test. So, so that now, makes every word ho- count. Hopefully nobody just puts that in an ad, a headline and a phone number. It would be nice to have a little more copy than that. But I understand what the litmus test is. Yes, absolutely. So that's what we talked about. The, and it's about all the time we had to talk about today was headlines. But yes. it's the most important piece. What else do we know about headlines? Headlines can are, are the most important part of the ad. You, you remember at the event... Uh, we, I gave you three headlines that were tested, 
And I'll tell you what, let's do the test right now. One of the headlines got five times the response of the other two. Was it headline A, I've never been able to get a good portrait of my child until now, or B, finally a children's portrait worth more than the paper it's printed on, or C, the best children's portrait at the right price guaranteed? You know, we did this test, people raised their hand, the room was about split, but the answer is B. And again, we said, what's the reason why? Everyone gave reasons that they thought why B won, but the truth is it doesn't matter. You just have to test. Test. And everybody's afraid to test. And guess what? They because didn't change any other part of the ad. Customer. Just the headline. Hey, go out to businessedradio.com. We've got we got war um, excuse me, we have Wayne Breitbath coming this next month in March up in Green Bay and Madison. He's gonna talk about business use of LinkedIn. Unbelievable ideas, so come and see us. See you later. Hey, it's Mark Imperial. I hope you enjoyed those highlights. Again, if you know a professional or business that we should feature on the show, you could nominate them by emailing me at radio at markimperial.com. One more time, that's radio at markimperial.com. Until next time, this is Mark Imperial. Make it a remarkable week. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.